In the last lesson of this sequence, we talked about uh, creating the web application and site collections for a topology like this. So let's go ahead and actually do that configuration. So I'll go over to my central admin web page. And the first thing I'm going to do is create that web application. So I'll click on Manage Web Applications. You notice I only have one in here right now, which is for central admin itself. So all I need to do is click on the new button to create a new one and then complete this form. So I'm going to create a new IS website and the SharePoint 80 is fine. I could name that whatever I want. The port is 80. Here I need to put in the host header name. I am going to use one and I've already uh, in DNS set this up so that it points at my first web server with a C name and a C name is fine. In previous versions of SharePoint we would have had to use an A record because we would set up Kerberos delegation against this host header but in, in this version we can just use NTLM we don't need to worry about that so uh, so just a C name record is fine or an A is, is fine as well. The path I'll leave is the default and anonymous isn't allowed because users do need to log into the SharePoint server typically with integrated Windows security. NTLM is fine and then notice my public URL is put down as SharePoint.Credit.Local and then port 80, which of course we leave off in our web browser, so that looks great. Here we'll create a new application pool, and this application pool will run using the web service account. So again, we want to isolate these web requests versus all of the other permissions on the other accounts, so that's why we use one that's completely separate. And then on the database server, it's assumed we're going to use the same one, and throughout this entire sequence we will. The database uh, name of WSS content will be created as, as we uh, go through this process, and that's fine. So then we'll click OK. And after a while, the success message comes up that says the application is created, so we are one step closer to having a SharePoint site that we can actually use. And notice on here it says once you're finished to create a new site collection, go to the site Create Site Collection page. So you can click there, and it'll take you directly there. I'm actually going to go through the menu because I want you to see where that is if you were going to create a site collection manually. So I'll go back to the application management and the first item in the list is create site collections. So I'll click on that. And this really couldn't be that much easier. It's automatically defaulted to the web application that we chose. If we click change web application here we we could choose another one if we had another one, but since we only have one, obviously we'll choose it. And we just need to give it some basic information. So this is going to be called the Crash Course BI site, we'll call it. I won't bother with the description. And here's where we choose the URL, really, of the site collection. And you can only choose the root URL once per web app, and that's what I'll, I'll select. If you do create multiple site collections, you can create them under Manage Sites, like this for example. So I can call that the web application slash site slash whatever I want. Maybe I'll call it BI. But uh, in this environment, I just want to have one as a root. That'll be a lot easier. Choose uh, 2013, and then under the Enterprise tab, I can choose Business Intelligence Center, and that will set up most of the content types that I'll need in this environment. Here I put in a primary and secondary site collection administrator if I want, so I will put in my user ID. And this just gives me permissions to do whatever I want with the site collection, including grant those permissions to others down the road. So make sure you do set this. Uh, you will, will be prompted to do it. And if you do have a backup or another administrator and, and you want to go ahead and add somebody right away, you can, you can go ahead and do that here. Then I'll click OK, and that will go ahead and, and create the site collection which will be located at the root of that URL that we looked at. And when the create process is finished we'll get this confirmation to tell us that the new top level site was created successfully. And I want to go look at it so I'll go ahead and click on the link. To avoid getting login dialogues like this within my SharePoint environment what I need to do is let my browser know that this is not an internet site. And so I need to put SharePoint.Cur.Local into some zone with an IE that allows integrated Windows security. Because what Internet Explorer does is whenever it sees periods in your URLs, it assumes that's on the internet. 
and it won't try to use integrated security. So what I'm going to do is go to Internet Options, Security, and then this site is on my local intranet, so I'm going to choose that. And I'll just add that URL to my local intranet. And now that I've refreshed the page, I can actually see my SharePoint site. I didn't get prompted for my user ID. And I can click around in here a little bit and see that, yes, you know, it is functioning. So after all that, we have so much of our farm is deployed and configured. And we have our first site collection up and running. We really don't have much in the way of BI functionality in the farm yet. And that's what we're going to do next.